Okay, so in this video, we're going to be solving problem 1.8b from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. This asks us, what constraints must the elements R, I, J of the three-dimensional rotation matrix in equation 1.30 satisfy in order to preserve the length of A? So equation 1.30 has been written out here where this is our three-dimensional rotation matrix, which we'll call R, acting upon a three-dimensional vector, which we'll call A. And we want to place constraints on R such that the length of A is preserved under this matrix multiplication. So what we're saying is that the magnitude or length of R times A is the same as the magnitude of A itself, i.e. it's preserved. And this is exactly the same as saying the magnitude squared of R times A is the magnitude squared of A. Now we can actually write these squares as dot products of these matrices with themselves. So this is R times A dotted with R times A. And that is equal to the dot product of A and A if the length is in fact preserved. So the reason we've done this is that we can use the transpose trick that we used to solve 1.8a in the previous video and that is that the dot product can also be written as the transpose of the first matrix multiplied by the second matrix So this dot product symbol is removed. And remembering from the last video that the transpose of this product is the transpose of A times the transpose of R. And then we have RA. Bearing in mind, this is still equal to this dot product, which we can write as the transpose of A times A. So looking at the left hand side and right hand side of this equation, we can see that the only way this will be satisfied is if the product of the transpose of R and R was the identity matrix. So we have transpose of R multiplied by R is the identity. And then if we multiply both sides by the inverse of R, then we have transpose of R times R times the inverse of R equals I times the inverse of R. R times the inverse of R is the identity, so we just have the transpose of R on this left hand side, and then the identity times the inverse of R is just the inverse of R. So this is the constraint that we have on the three dimensional rotation matrix R, and that is that it's an orthogonal matrix. And this is the case when the transpose of the matrix is equal to its inverse. So we've already established that the rotation matrix R must be orthogonal in order to preserve the length of vectors A. Therefore, it must satisfy this condition where the transpose of R times R is equal to the identity matrix. And this is what I've written out more rigorously here. 
And as you can see, this matrix is the transpose of this matrix because the rows and columns have been switched between the two. And this is the three-dimensional identity matrix to which the product of these is equal. So in order to write these constraints out slightly more formally, we need to talk about the sigma notation of matrix multiplication. So let's take a simple example. Say we have C equals the product of matrices A and B. And if we want to know what the individual elements of C are, we'll call them C subscript I, K. Well, these are the sum from J equals one to some integer N. A, I, J, where these are the elements of matrix A times B, J, K, where these are the elements of matrix B. So let's extend this example to the one we have, where the matrix I equals the transpose of R times R. And we want to know what the individual elements of this matrix I are. Well, we already know what they are, but let's try and show this fully. So we have I subscript I K. And just following on from this, we can write this as the sum from J equals one to N where N is three, because we're working in with three dimensional matrices here. And we have R i j transposed multiplied by r j k now using what we know about transposes this is exactly the same as the product of r j i and r j k because a transpose means that the rows and columns switch, so RIJ becomes RJI. So looking at this formula we've generated for the elements of the matrix of the product of the transpose of R and R, we can compare it with the actual identity matrix which we know that this has to be equal to if R is orthogonal. So if we look at the diagonal elements of the identity matrix, so this is I11, I22, and I33, which are all equal to 1. So this is the case where I equals K. And all the elements are zero for the case where i is not equal to k. So if we look again at this sum, we can say that this sum is equal to one when i equals k and zero when i is not equal to k. So there's actually a symbol for this called the Kronecker delta symbol, which has a subscript i k, which takes on two values, zero when i is not equal to k, and one when i equals k. So this, you can see how this perfectly resembles the identity matrix where the diagonal elements are all one and the off diagonal elements are all zero. So in summary, the constraints that we place on the rotation matrix are such that the length of A is preserved can be summarized in this equation, which is equivalent to saying that R must be an orthogonal matrix if you want to preserve the length of the vector A. And the definition of orthogonal is that the transpose of the matrix is equal to its inverse.
So there, we've solved problem 1.8b. Uh, thanks for watching the video, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below.